Okay, we're back. You're watching theCUBE's continuous coverage of HPE's GreenLake announcements. And one of the things that we said on theCUBE when we first saw GreenLake was let's watch the pace at which HPE delivers new services. What's that cadence like? Because that's a real signal as to the extent that the company's leaning into the cloud. And today, we're covering that continued expansion. We're here with Tom Black, who is the general manager of HPE Storage, and Omar Assad, who's the storage platform lead for cloud data services at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Gentlemen, welcome, it's good to see you. Thanks for Dave, coming Dave, thanks for having us today, good to see you. Happy to be here, Dave. So, I mean, obviously a lot has changed you know, globally, but when you think of things like cyber threats, ransomware, uh, the acceleration of business transformation. Uh, these are new things, a lot of it is unknown, a lot of it was forced upon us, Tom. What are you guys doing to address these trends? How are you helping customers? Sure, thanks for the question. So, if you think back to what we launched in early May, kind of the, the, the initial cloud transformation of what was our traditional storage business, um, we really focused on one key theme, very customer end, customer driven theme, that the cloud operational model has won. And that customers want that operational model, whether they're operating their workload in the cloud, or whether they're operating that workload in their own facility or in a colo, kind of the same thing. So that was kind of our true north, and that's what we launched out of the gate in May. But we did allude in May to the fact that we would have an ongoing series of new services coming out on the uh, HPE GreenLake Edge to Cloud platform. And just really excited today to be talking about some of what that expansion looks like. Um, we will continue uh, through this month and through the quarters ahead to really add more and more services in that vein of focusing on bringing that true cloud services model to our customers. So we're really excited today to unveil kind of we've entered the data protection as a service market uh, with HPE GreenLake. So this is really our expansion into a very top of mind topic and set of problems and solutions or headaches and aspirins, to quote an old friend, yeah. um, that CIOs face as they think about how to manage data through its life cycle in their organization. When I talk to CIOs during the pandemic, not that we're out yet, but, but really in the throes of it, and ask them about things like business resilience, they said, you know, we really had to rethink our disaster recovery strategy. It was, it was sort of geared toward a, a fire or a hurricane, and we, we just didn't even imagine this type of disaster, if you will. So we really needed to rethink it. So when I, I see your, your disaster recovery as a service and capabilities like that, is that the Zerto acquisition? Yes, Dave, thanks. Yeah, so we're super happy to have the Zerto team now as part of uh, our family. Um, just a, a brilliant team, a well-respected technology, uh, just kind of a, a blue chip set of customers and partners that really uh, appreciate what Zerto has to offer. Um, as we looked at the data protection as a service market, one of the hardest problems is really in that disaster recovery space. I think Omer's going to talk a little bit more about yeah. that today. Um, but Zerto really does bring the leading industry, what's called continuous data protection um, capability into our Green Lake platform. Um, we've just recently closed the acquisition and we're working on kind of the integration uh, plan as we speak now that we can actually talk to each other post-close. Um, but you'll uh, you'll continue to see you know some really exciting milestones each and every quarter as we march forward with Zerto now as part of the family. So we all talk about how data is, is so important. We, we certainly learned during the pandemic that that if you weren't a digital business, you were out of business. And a digital business is a data business. So things like backup or data protection as a service become increasingly critical. I know you have some capabilities there. Maybe you could share with us. Absolutely, Dave. So, you know, one of the things that we noticed was as we took the storage business through its transformation and we started to convert, you know, with the launch of the Electra 9K and the 6K platform, we really, really brought the cloud operational model to our customers. So one of the things that, you know, feedback that was coming loud and clear to us is that as we look at the storage portfolio, where we look at file, block, and object, which are now being transformed into a cloud operational experience, data protection, disaster recovery, coming back into business after a disaster, snapshot management, all of those capabilities, we still had to rely on our partner technologies in order to do that. Now, it's not bad that we have great partners in the data protection world, but what we're really focused on is that cloud operational model and cloud operational experience end to end, as Tom mentioned, through the data management lifecycle. So as a result of that, we talked to a lot of our customers, we talked to a bunch of partners, and one of the things that was coming back was that yes, there are many 
data protection backup offerings on the market, but that true as a service experience uh, that is completely integrated to the services experience of the storage that the customers is experiencing, that is not there. So what we looked at was, especially to the largest ecosystem, which is the VMware ecosystem, so, so we're launching data protection as a service or backup as a service for our VMware customers offered from Data Services Cloud Console as a SaaS portal. 100% SaaS service, nothing to install, no media servers, no application servers, no catalog servers, no backup targets, no patching, no expansion, no capacity planning, none of that is needed. All that's needed is sign on, click, give your vCenter credentials, and off you go. That's it, that is it, three clicks and you're in business. So currently, you know, in our, in our analysis, uh, we offer 5x faster recovery from any of the competitive offerings that they're, they're, they're here. Three and a half better dedupe ratios. But for our customers, it's as simple as this VM is protected as this many dollars per gig per month, that's it. No backup target, no media server, no catalog server, nothing, nothing to manage. Total turnkey off of the portal. So that's the cadence of services that we promise, and this is one of the first ones when it comes to data management that is coming out into the open. So you may have just answered this question, but I want to pose it and get you maybe to summarize it. Because Tom was talking earlier about the, the customer mandate for cloud in a cloud operational model. So I, I want you to explain to the audience how you're making that real. Actually, can I start that one? Yeah, yeah sure. So here, the test was Monday morning getting ready for this chat with you, Dave. They got me on console, and I'm not kidding. Three clicks, I got back up, up and running off the uh, lab VMware instance. So I'll pass it off to you, the real answer. But if I can do it in three clicks, as hey, a, we're in pretty good shape. As, as a convenience of this service, even Tom can be your backup. I might be able to even do with this. So, uh, uh, so again, you know, a very pertinent question, Dave. The, 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 when, you, when you look at the cloud operational model, as you abstract the hardware and, and take the management model up into a SaaS service, it gives our customers that access to that continuous delivery access that we have. We're going to continue to make the service model uh, be better in the cloud model and automatically uh, customers get the value of it without even reinstalling or going through a patch cycle or an upgrade cycle. But as we get into this cloud operational model, one of the things that was missing was uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you start to talk about applications, how are application workloads going to be deployed? How are they going to be protected and how are they going to be expanded? So what we did was we, we expanded our InfoSight offerings by merging them into the Data Services Cloud Console and we're releasing a new service called App Insights. It is going to be available to our customers at the end of the month. Uh, it is, the, nothing has to change. They don't have to install any uh, sort of agents or, or, or host modifications, nothing like that. If they're customers of Aletra, Nimble, Primera boxes, and they're using InfoSight and Data Services Cloud Console, they will automatically get App Insights. What App Insights does is, it really teases apart all that data that we have been collecting with InfoSight, and now with the uh, acquisition of HPE Cloud Physics, we're merging them together and relating the operational stack top to bottom. So discovering all the way from your application usage, network usage, storage usage, IOP usage, VMware usage, cross-collaborating them, and presenting that to a customer from an app or an outcome perspective, all in the Data Services Cloud Console. So what this does for our customers is, it really, really transforms not only their operational experience, but also buying experience. Because if you remember, in one of the earlier releases of Data Services Cloud Console, we released this application called uh, you know, Intelligent Intent-Based Provisioning in which you just describe your workload and we go ahead and we provision that. App Insights and InfoSight feed that information directly into that and Cloud Physics generates and results and displays those analytics mm -hmm. back to us, to your partner of record and to the HPE so we can all come together on a common data-driven discussion point with our customers to continue to make their journey better. Tom, where's all the boxes? <laughs> Traditional storage is changing. I, I've actually been waiting for this day for a long, long time. We've certainly seen glimpses of it from the cloud players, but they don't have you know, super rich portfolios, storage portfolios, they're right. growing now, but this is a really good, strong example of a company with a large storage portfolio that's, I mean, I haven't heard the word three par once today, <laughs> right? right? And so, but that says to me, that's an indication that you're thinking like a, a cloud player. Can you maybe talk to that? Sure, yeah, no, we're, we're, we're just tremendously excited about this transformation and really the reception we've got in the market from analysts, from partners, from customers, because you're right, you haven't heard us 
talk about a box at all today. It's really about a block service, a file service, an object service, a backup and recovery service, a disaster recovery service. That, that's, that is the, the, the language, if you will, of the business problems of our customers, not do they need to pick this widget or that widget and how many apps can I get here and there and what should the HA cage protection scheme be. That is, that is our job to manage underneath our true north, which is the cloud operational model. And so that's going to be really how we we have set our course and how we will uh, kind of deliver products, solutions, offers into the market underneath that umbrella. Ultimately, um, getting our customers, wherever their data is, Dave, to be able to interact at that service level instead of at that infrastructure box level. All right, you got my attention. Wh wherever the data, so that's the North Star here is, this is, you know, you're not done today, obviously, but, but you've got a vision to bring that to the cloud, across clouds, on-prem, out to the edge, that's the abstraction layer that you're going to build. You're hiding all that complexity. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And that's cloud. So the definition of cloud is changing. Yeah, it? um, it's, it's, it's no longer, sorry, it's no longer a remote set of services somewhere up in the cloud. It's expanding on-prem, hybrid, across clouds, edge, everywhere. You're, you're exactly right, Dave. It is, cloud is more about the experience and the outcome it gives a customer than actually where the compute or storage is. And we've chosen to take a very customer in agnostic uh, position of whether it's you know, data in your premise, data in your cloud, we're going to help you manage that data and deliver you know, that data to workloads and analytics uh, wherever, the, wherever the compute needs to be, wherever the data needs to be. Again, technologies like Zerto giving us the ability to move data across clouds, from facilities to clouds, back and forth. So it's a really exciting new day for uh, HPE Green Lake. We're just so super happy to bring these technologies out and really continue to follow on the course of doing what we said we would do. It's a new mindset, it starts there, I guess. It's, it's obviously new, certainly new technologies. Uh, you're talking about machine intelligence. Mm -hmm. This is a metadata challenge. You know, Absolutely. Big time, you know, long term, that, that North Star that we talked about. And applying that machine intelligence, all the experience that you get, like data that you're gathering, is I think ultimately how customers want you to solve this problem. So in the in the middle of uh, you know InfoSight, data services, cloud console, and the instrumentation that is already shipping on our appliances, both in edge appliances and the data center appliances, we're collecting more than a trillion data points over the period of a quarter. Right at the end of the day, so it's harnessing that at the back end to cross-relate and then using the cloud physics acquisition, what we're doing is we can now simulate these things on behalf of our customers into the future timeline. So at the end of the day, it's really about listening to the customer and what outcomes that they want to achieve with their data. Storage is there, we provide excellent persistence layers where customers can store their data safely. But at the end of the day, it's customer's choice. They can store their data out at the edge in compute servers, commodity servers, x86 servers. They can have their data in the data center, which they are privately owned, or their data can be in a service provider, or it can be in a hyperscaler. The infrastructure or the persistence layer is independent from the Data Services Cloud Console. Data Services Cloud Console provides our customers with a SaaS-based industry-leading, metadata-rich management experience, which then allows you to draw conclusions. So services like Cloud Physics, services like Zert, uh, um, InfoSight provide the analytics and richness of the metadata. Backup and the recovery service allows us to index our customers' data and add a rich metadata to that, and then Combine that with Zerto, which is our disaster recovery as a service offering going to start over here, that gives the customer a very simple slider as to where they want their protection levels mm -hmm. to be. They want their protection to be instant or they want their protection to be lazy, eight hours window. But the thing is, at the end of the day, it's about choice without managing the complexities of the hardware underneath. Because it's programmable. Completely. Right? Yes. I come in, I, I, what I'm hearing is file object blocks, so a multi-protocol, I got a full stack, so data, data reduction, my snaps, my replicate, whatever, whatever I need that's in there as a service. I can, I can access latency sensitive storage if I need to, Absolutely. or I can push it out to cheaper storage. I can push it out to the cloud, presumably. I can someday I air gap it, I, I, and it's all done as, as infrastructure as code, and then different protection levels. 
Where I see this going, it really gets exciting, is you're, you're now a data company and you're bringing AI, machine intelligence, and, and driving data products, data services for your customers who are going to monetize that at, the, at, at their end of the value chain. That's right, that's right. And safely and securely, keeping in mind that with Zertos technology, we can give you, you know, small second recovery points to protect against ransomware. So all of that operational elegance, all of those insights and intelligence to help you build a more agile, um, you know, workload-centric organization, but then to do it safely and securely against ransomware, that's kind of the, the, the storm, if you will, that's brewing, and we're just really excited to be at the eye of it. I'm excited too, this is a, I've been waiting for this day for a long time, and we're not talking about NVMe and atomic rights, and I, I love that stuff, by the way, and I'm sure it's all under the covers, but that's not what drives business value. Guys, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Hey Dave, thanks for having us, it's been great Thank to be you, here. Thank you Dave, appreciate it. All right, we're seeing a transformation all, right. all through the stack, and uh, keep it right there. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE and our coverage of HPE's GreenLake announcements. We'll be right back.